If you're interested in laying one, one of these out manually, follow me through this step-by-step -step video. This offset happens to be six by five and 12 inches finished in length. Now the finished in length is important. In classrooms, we will talk about a one inch working line, the one inch line. Anyways, you'll see me do a scribing on metal in a few minutes. This shop ticket of the offset has all finished dimensions. This offset has two cheeks and two wrappers and we need to find the cut sizes or we're going to start with the cut size for the cheeks. Here you can see I need 13 horizontally and vertically 10 and a half. So I need a piece of metal 13 by 10 and a half. I also want you to pay close attention to what these lines are called. There's a cut line, a finish line and a working line. I will be using these in my formula later on. These lines are for S and drives. S and drive is the type of connector used on both ends of this fitting to connect to the other duct. So right now I'm scratching or scribing my metal and typically I would do this to everything. But to have it stand out a bit more I'm going to do this for you. Here's a half inch. And I'll reset it to one inch. This is always the case for S and drives. So half and half is or half and one. And now on the bottom and on the top, I'm going to scratch a quarter inch. This is for the edge or a flange that we will be using to insert inside the, or it's called the male part of a Pittsburgh lock. I'm adding a quarter inch, but it actually takes three sixteenths. So right now let's plot in our duct dimensions. And here you can see it is six, the cheeks are six inches wide on both ends. So now I'm simply finding the center of the six again on both ends or both openings. This becomes the center for my center line radius formula. Here I've just marked or identified these as center line. So here's the radius, the uh, formula. Offset square plus working length square divided by four times the offset. This is a formula that's going to draw your arcs. So here you see I inputted the numbers, four squared plus 11 squared divided by 16 will give me 8.56, which is eight and nine sixteenths. So what do I do with that eight and nine sixteenths? From the center, or again, what I'm forgetting to say is, you might have to drop your one inch line or your working line lower and higher on each side. I'll identify these points by A, B, C, and D. Also, I have E and F. Now I'm ready to use 
or scratch scribe the arcs for the wrappers. Set your dividers from E to D. Strike the arc down. And while I have that set with the same setting, go to EFA and do the same thing. Now adjust the dividers from E to C and strike an arc and hopefully they are tangent to one another. With the same setting, go to the other side, FB, and do the same. There, you've got your cheek. Now, I'm going to add that 3 16 I talked about earlier for the male portion of the Pittsburgh lock. So go ahead and add 3 16 the same way as you did your other arcs. Now, you're all good to go and cut your pattern out. And like I said earlier, you're gonna be needing two of these. Notch all four corners in this manner. Always good practice to mark the inside of the fitting. So take this pattern and trace it on to another one. If you're enjoying the content of this video, you may want to subscribe. Once you've got both patterns, again, make sure you mark the inside of the fitting as we are getting ready to go and form the locks, connectors, and seams. Here, we're heading off to the power flanger on top of the lock formers. Here I'm going to attempt to turn 3 16 of an inch up 90 degrees using this power flanger or a manual easy edger. So there's two ways or three ways. Uh, you can either use your vice grips to turn the edge up or use the slit on the machine itself. Here I've run one pass and you can see that it buckled up, but don't worry, run it through uh, without too much pressure another time and it will take out the ripple. Now my second time around, easier and uh, do the other one in the same manner. Again, hopefully you're noticing that I am looking at the X that I marked on the inside of the pattern.
There, the cheeks are complete. Now we've got to go and make two wrappers or two belts. You can either use a peewee tape from the cheek or you can use a formula which is written here. Or this is the physical way of doing it. So I'm going to demo the peewee tape method. So I'd be measuring my 3 16th edge and the reading on the peewee tape was So the peewee tape said 12 inches, but that's from working line to working line. Therefore, I have to add another one and one on each side, meaning the wrapper is 14 inches long using the peewee tape method. Now this other method, what I'm gonna do is find the slant minus working length divided by three, do that in brackets, then I will multiply that answer by four and I will add my working length. So let's do that. I need to find the slant length. The slant length basically is the working length of the fitting, which is going to be 11 and the offset is four, square root this. Now I've just found the slant, 11.7. Now minus your working length, which was 11, we'll leave you with 0.7. Divide that number by three, multiply it by four, because I had to do what was in brackets first, and then Add your working length to it, which is 11. You'll notice here I've got in the formula 11.93, which is almost identical to 12. So I'm gonna say it's 12 plus two. So we get the same thing using the formula or peewee tape. But again, if you're using formulas, Everything has to be imported properly. Here our wrapper is going to finish five inches wide. So I need to cut a piece seven inches wide by our answer for the length was 14. So five by 14. I'm gonna scratch my one inch for the Pittsburgh pocket. In the right side, I'll scratch under the half inch because this is my S and drives on both ends. So this is how I notch my wrappers. Do this to all four corners and then duplicate this piece. There you have it. Two identical pieces. Let's go to the lock formula. So this will put your pocket or the female portion of the Pittsburgh lock. Again, I've got X's in there representing the inside of the fitting. Going through the lock formula is not that important, but going to the rolls will be. So now, It's always good practice to bring a uh, cheek with you and uh, roll based on the arc of the cheeks.
Once the fit up is done, as close as you can, let's go over and add the uh, drive cleats using the cleat bender. So now you see the X is on the inside. The drive cleat goes towards the outside. On both ends. Do the same for both wrappers. So now that you've added all your seams, locks, and connectors onto your four pieces, it's time to assemble. And when it comes to assembling, um, from my experience, the smaller the fitting, the harder it is to put together. So uh, simply have patience if you're building a small fitting because they aren't easy to put together. Here uh, I opened the lock using my hammer. Some people will use screwdriver. Other people will insert a piece of metal into the lock uh, before rolling. Um, it's up to you to discover what method works best for you. Um, the most important thing here when you're putting the fittings together is make sure your working lines and your finish lines are lining up with one another. Because once it's all tacked and the lock is down tight, you won't be able to move the cheek. So keep adjusting as you're putting it together. And it's always best practice to tack the fitting first before hammering the Pittsburgh seam down completely tight. So the fitting measures six on both ends. It's five inches wide and the offset was stated as a four inch offset. And should be 12 inches long. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you have any questions, simply leave a comment. And I'll do my best to get back to you.